meeting. <laughs> Lee. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> hey, Glenn. How are you? I'm all right, Emily. How are you? I'm doing great. How's your day been today? My day has been productive. Good. Good. Yeah, That's awesome. But trying to make it through. Okay. Okay. So have you failed at anything today? Have I failed? Mm-hmm. I didn't put gas in my wife's car. And she said, Oh car. man, that's a big a one. Whole picture of it, almost on E. Now it's not that's a big one. But the standard that I said is that it gets filled up. We didn't fill it up yesterday. Whole long story. Whatever. Okay. So did she have to leave the house? Yeah. Oh man. So she had to put gas in her own car? No, she, she'll be on E. She'll leave the light on. She knows. Right. Okay. So when I, get yeah. home, I will go take that car and fill it up with gasoline. Gotcha. gotcha. And wash it because I know she hasn't washed it. Even though I paid for the little thing to go through. <laughs> that's a big one. You're right. That's a really big one. I like to kind of, that's kind of my icebreaker to see, you know, because we as people, as professionals, we we kind of tend to overthink a lot of things and we try to go, go, go and get everything exactly right and hit each nail. And so that's my icebreaker to see, you know, in this business, in this life, like, have you failed at anything today and, and how open people are really are about that question. So, um, I definitely failed today. I failed at um, my nutrition. Like I didn't eat the way I was supposed to eat today. So that's kind of my, my hiccup for today. So that means that I'm dragging, I'm lagging, you know, my body doesn't feel the way it should. And so that plays a big part in everything that we do throughout the day, right? I had Popeyes today. So I really, <laughs> according to your standard, it was good. It was good. <laughs> at least you ate. It gave me I three. Didn't. You know, people cheat. They don't give you but one different sauce. I got three. Right. Oh, oh my, I did you use all three of them? I can't confirm or deny the amount. Okay. Of, okay. <laughs> I'm so, and everything. I was in. I'm gonna I'm 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 pay for it. I know I'm gonna pay for right, it. Right. Right. You'll definitely be crashing later on. <laughs> All right, Glenn. So let's get into it. So give us a little bit of your intro. Tell me what you do, or tell my audience what you do and why you do what you do. <laughs> why I do what I do. Why you do what you I think do. Tell them what you do first. Is, so uh, I am an executive within the security industry. I uh, manage a global team of sales professionals. So I have a lot of success uh, there. Uh, married, father too. And I just, uh, we're doing a great job enjoying life, uh, setting those goals, uh, crushing those goals together. And that's kind of how we look at uh, and measure our success year over year. Um, but I think for your audience, what would be interesting is why did this guy write a book? I did not want to write a book. I did not want to be a YouTuber or anyone like that. Um, but out of uh, some, my own personal you know, pain and struggle in a previous relationship, I began doing a lot of self-reflection. And with that self-reflection, I had to start asking myself, who am I? What do I want? What do I qualify for? And what does the person that I qualify for want for me? Mm. So out of that in 2016, I began writing a number of articles just about kind of the relationship dynamic. And I kind of juxtaposed that with electronics and, you know, and security where I was from. Those articles were on Facebook and a couple of, uh, I had a website at the time, not much traction. My friends were gracious and they read them or pretended to read them. Uh, but what I did is start curating those articles and it became the first iteration of the book, The Middle Ground. Um, then I met my wife and I realized uh, pretty quickly that for my wife is going to take a different skill set in order to identify and meet her needs. So as we were dating, um, and she would say this, but I told her after 90 days, you and I go together, old school. So you need to cut off all the other little lunch buddies and drink friends because you and I are together, you got two weeks. And then I started the process of courting her at a higher level with the intention around marriage. So that sentence that I just provided right there doesn't happen. It is very rare uh, for that to be the case. So as I courted her and we got engaged then we married, and then we went through the first couple of years of our marriage, kind of the dynamic of the book changed because we, we changed, I changed. And so, what I found is that through that experience in a combination of being an executive and leading teams for the last 15 years, there were a lot of similarities that I was seeing that was regardless of race, income, um, 
background education where people who were successful were having challenges navigating the dating market and getting the relationship outcomes that they wanted. So thus, I took that experience over a 15 year period, took my own personal experiences from a failure and now a successful courtship in a marriage, and I decided let's rework the book and let's create it as the middle ground. So it's now about discovering the new rules for dating. The book is a three part book. So part one identifies what I spoke, spoke about earlier. How did we get here? How did we get here as a society from where dating has become hard? Picking a partner has become hard. We have more people willing to sign up for shows such as Love Island, Love at Love on Demand, Married at First Sight. I right. may have made one of these up. I don't know. But right. all of these shows are on and people are looking for uh, love. They're looking for the outcome that was promised decades ago. So the first talks about how do we get here? The second thing it talks about is who are you as a man and as a woman? What type of man, what type of woman are you? And then going from what type of man and what type of woman you are, what do you qualify for? And then what you qualify for, what does the person you qualify for want? Um, the feedback from the book has been what I expected. Um, it has been triggering. It's, and, and shockingly more triggering for the men but um, the feedback is what I expected because it's supposed to get the conversation started. Um, so that's what I am, what I did, why I did it. Okay, all right. So let's let's back it up just a little bit. So let's let's dive in a little bit deeper. You said that um, when you when you wrote the book, right? So were you married before you wrote the book? I was married when I started writing the first book. Okay. Okay. So the first iteration, I was married when I started writing the first iteration of the book. Okay. All right. So now what does your wife do? Do you mind me asking? Yeah, she's a boss. She's an attorney. She's an attorney. Okay. So for her being an attorney, and then what were you doing as far as like professional wise when you were dating? Uh, when we met, I was a consultant. So okay. I had, I, I was actually, this is transparent, it's knowledge, it's on LinkedIn. I was laid off uh, from a consumer electronics company. It was my first time being laid off. So I was really figuring things out. Um, I started a company, my, my second company, started my second company, which was a failure, and it's fine. Um, and then I began consulting on the, in the project management state, space, in the project management space, so you can edit that. Um, and in that project management space, I was uh, creating a CRM migrations, doing SEO, uh, managing transitions of servers, and even managing transitions within the warehouse and manufacturing space. So uh, it was it was pretty lucrative. I had okay. a, number of, a number of clients, and it was it, it did pretty well. Okay, so I'm asking because I'm trying to figure out. She's a boss. You're busy. You're doing things. Um, you had a lot of things going. You had because when you're figuring out things, it means that your mind is constantly going. Your, your mind is constantly trying to figure out the next step after that step, and then the step after that step. So, like when you guys were dating, headed towards this this wonderful relationship, how did you or how did she handle balancing you? <laughs> well, how did she handle balancing me? Yes, the other way around. <laughs> I talk about that in the book. I had to balance, handle her. And really, I think what I brought to her was a sense of balance. So she was work, work, work. She was, I mean, right. she was a partner. Right. She was on the partner track. Right. Um, and she became a partner within a year and a half, a year and a half of us dating. So it was getting her focus and understanding is going to take a sacrifice now for you to get to what you want. The good news is the relationship piece is settled. We're getting married. So. Right. So we were engaged when she became partner. Okay. Okay. So, and that's what I meant by how does she handle you? Because you not being a lawyer, you not understanding the whole aspect of her being an attorney and, you know, what comes along with that. She had to deal with someone who, you know, was still wanting that time, needing that time, someone who, you know, didn't really just fully understand what she couldn't give. Right. So she had to kind of. What could she give? Um, the availability. So what? she was, available. I mean, I'm just asking, I'm just, I think, I think we're available and we make time for what's important to us. She makes time do. for me. We do, but for her to become a partner, 
I'm yeah. pretty sure she was pretty limited on. Well, I came in and, and I think timing is key. This is part okay. two. So the timing is key. So there was a season where she was not dating because right. she was 100% focused on her career and bringing in right. her clients and winning cases and going to trial. So she didn't have the bandwidth to nurture a relationship. Right. I kind of came in on the tail end, you know, thank God. And I was able to win ultimately because she was able to pivot and start making time for us. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So that was that was my question. That's what I was wondering. Does okay. your audience they don't make they have a they have a hard time making time for one another? Making time for they well, that's definitely a key. That's definitely a key that we have discussed before. Oh my because- God. Even being married, you know, but even being married, like I'm married, I have a husband who has, he owns his own business. Mm -hmm. Um, I own my own couple of businesses and then I still work full time. Um, We have four children who are 13, 14, 15, and 16. So yeah, it's definitely a struggle. Wait, what? Hold on. (laughs) Don't write it down. (laughs) 13, 14, 15, 15, and 16. Yes, sir. They all, you're going to have graduation, 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 college, 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 grad school, grad school, wedding, wedding. Yep. Why y'all do that? Who knows? I, it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> I promise you it wasn't planned. And I have my 11th, my junior, like, I was just thinking about that the other day, like, oh my God, like, you know, I started working with him for his college stuff and when he was in mm-hmm. 10th grade. So now I got another 10th grader and I'm like, yeah, so that's a whole nother podcast. But yes, yeah, so. In saying that, yes, it is definitely a struggle in making time for each other. It's definitely a struggle in setting setting aside, you know, that time for each other. It just is. Like, my kids are very, very um, involved in school and in the community, you know, so, and I try to make sure I don't take away from that, you know, so, yeah, that was my question. So, how do you balance it? I'm I'm curious. Your husband has, you have a couple businesses, work full time. I do. He has businesses. Mm -hmm. Where's the balance? Uh, we make time for what we want, like you said. That, that's, that's it. You make time for what you want. But it's not that easy. It's not that easy. I just had a birthday last weekend. So and you're 25. Happy birthday. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so we went out of town for that. But I mean, that was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We came right back on Sunday, you know, but we didn't go far. We just went to Atlanta because kids had just started school, the you know, like two days before that. So um, that was our time. Now, when we're going to spend time together again, I can't tell you. <laughs> like, but you know, it's, it is what it is. See, but, there's, seasons. Um, there's seasons. You said what? There's seasons for, for things. So uh, there, there for is. us, we have, you know, at this, at this stage, we have two children under three. Okay. So I'm sleep deprived. My <laughs> wife is even more sleep deprived. So if one of us is going to be sleep deprived, it probably needs to be me in order for the rest of the, the, the house right. to move forward. So we make accommodations for for our significant other, for our spouse specifically. And you have to, I think what's important from people on the outside of marriage looking in, you have to be willing to give. I mean, Mm -hmm. marriage to me, I love my wife. I love her more. I love her body more after giving birth to my two big kids. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be more understanding and willing to give to one another. And I think what I found in the process of writing this book through interviews, people were just so self-focused. You can't even get to understanding how to deal with a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old, a husband and run and juggle businesses. So that, that's what I hope comes out of this entire process on my end is that people start to look and you know, be more introspective about what is, what is it that I really want? Do I just wanna say that I have a wife? Do right. I just wanna say I have a husband? Or do I actually want to live under the call I, I call being a husband and a wife a call because it's oh, all definitely. about duty it's all about service and then when you add husband wife mother father on it there's a second layer of service right. and then you finally get to yourself third fourth fifth and sixth and you have to be okay with that for this season right i love that i love that you're right it's definitely it's definitely a season um, and we did, we, we discussed that too, you know, putting yourself first or, you know, being okay with being last and you have to be able to definitely make time for yourself as well. And a lot of times yeah. being, being in the professional world and doing everything that we do, you don't, you don't get to do that, you know? So, um, the balance, you definitely, you're right. The balance definitely has to be there and it is a calling. I love that. I wrote that down. So 
I love that. It is definitely a calling. This is not for the week. <laughs> you know, no. being an entrepreneur is not for the week. Being a book writer, anything that you do in life that's worth, worth anything, you know, it's not for the week. You have to be able to run yeah. steady. You know, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, so let's break down something else that you said that I absolutely love. You said, um, what do you qualify for? Like, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of times we go into relationships and we don't realize that what we're bringing to the table may not level up to what we're wanting, you know? And I think a lot of times women definitely, um, we overshoot or undershoot, you know? We don't, we don't measure up. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but I actually have a counter to that. I think some people aren't shooting at all now. Some people okay. are just opting out because of fear, rejection. Right. They're just deciding not to try and then they blame the market for the result. Perfect example. Man, it ain't no good women out here. I'm sorry for the for your audience. This is how I speak. It ain't no good women out here. Man, I tried, man. My baby mama, you know, she ain't acting right. Me and the girl I met, she ain't acting right. So I'm done. And then he's literally done. He's, right. he's done. Or she's saying, you know, I'm really tired. I'm a strong, independent woman. I need a man who's on my level that I can, that's, I don't have to level love. So I'm done dating. And both of those groups look at their life at 45 to 65 and they are longing for a relationship. Mm -hmm. But what it takes for what you said is it takes intention about building the muscles to really get what you qualify for. So the perfect example that I've used in individual coaching and I've heard as I've been writing, as I wrote the book, and as I continue to follow up with people from those interview sessions, what books have you read? Now, we talk about that in corporate America all the time. Oh, I read, uh, uh, I read The New Rules of Sales, uh, uh, Whatever It Takes, I got Outliers, I got, you know, Good to Great. Okay, if two books for the audience, and I'm pretty sure you probably have told them this. His Needs, Her Needs by William F. Hardy and The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Two right. books you need to own and two books you need to have on download because if you spend a month reading both of those books and then three months applying the knowledge from those books in your current relationship, you'll get a better outcome. Right. And it helps you in your career, it helps you in your personal relationships, et cetera. In that process, you get to understand what do I qualify? I am 6'2", you know, so I qualify for what I receive, which is my wife, who is gorgeous, who's a dime, who I love more and more every day. If I don't qualify for Rihanna, now <laughs> Rihanna don't look better than my wife, but I don't get a multimillionaire star, billionaire, she's a billionaire star, I don't qualify for that. I don't understand her life. I don't understand her world. So I don't even have any business going after that. I qualify for a boss attorney who kicks butt each and every day. Right. Who's a mother who has a spirit of tradition with a modern twist um, and who loves the life that we created for, uh, for one another. So that's what I qualify for. Too many, you said that women specifically sometimes overshoot. And I would, I would agree with that, but I also say men overshoot. And Part of the reason social media, they think yeah. everything's available. They think that on any app, they can swipe a certain way and get whatever. There's this mentality that there's something better that will come along. When what I talk about in the book, 60 years ago, you married the person that was in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. in your age group. Or if you didn't do that, you did age gap dating and women got with someone a little bit older and more established in order to kind of protect the family legacy and provide children down the line. But now we don't even consider that. That's archaic. We now say, I deserve, I want, I'm going to get, I will. And we have no idea what that takes, the work that it right. takes to get to that outcome. Right. That's absolutely true. So give us um, your favorite part of the book. Uh, chapter two in part one is uh, Boys to High Value Men. So the, in, in the research to this book, I'm fully aware of the blue pill and the red pill. And part of my hesitation was with this book, I do not want to get caught up in y'all drama with that. Because <laughs> those people, in my opinion, they don't like each other. The, the, blue, right. the, the men in the world, they don't even like each other. They don't want to get to anything related to the middle ground. But in that book, I try to lay out 
six type of men that your audience of women have already met. The first would be a boy. We already know what a boy is. Boys play with toys. Boys whine. They're emotionally immature. Uh, boys want to be bigger and stronger and older, but they're not. Then there's the F boy. That's the favorite. The F boy is the one that is charismatic, good looking, has a great personality, fun to be around, seems to always have discretionary income. He's great for intimacy without really giving the intimacy, but he's the master of gaslighting. He's mm -hmm. the master of disguise and deception. And this is the one that leaves the most broken hearts. Then you have males. Well, really you have guys. Let's, let's, then you have guys. So guys, you all know, you work with them, went to school with them, nothing really spectacular about them. These guys don't really give you the chemistry feels you're looking for. So those guys are just kind of there. They're always in the back end, but they are never really succeeding with relationship outcomes. Then you have the males. The males are not F boys and not boys, but they're kind of a more mature amalgamation of it where, where they're emotional, uh, they tend to lead with their emotions and run their logic emotionally. And as a man, that puts you in hot water. You mm. come, and these males are typically more deferential to the women in their lives, uh, which is great initially. But I believe, and you guys can hate me or love me, that most women in a relationship want to have a leader. They want their man to lead. They want to help uh, or they want a partner. Males don't offer that. Males are going to offer you deference and males are going to offer you frustration. Right. Uh, then we have men. Men are broken down into pretty much two other categories, but you have modern men and you have traditional men. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have the high value. And the high value man is less than 10% of any marketplace in which you find yourself. And the high value men are the most needy and the most demanding and want the most tradition uh, out of their woman. They're not looking for a partnership. They're not looking for 50-50. They're looking for, you get on my program and you'll reap the benefits of it. Um, and high value men are typically much older and they don't come from certain industries. They don't come from mm -hmm. athletics and entertainment. They don't come from pastoral care, pastoring and preaching. They don't come from politics. All four right. of those groups that I talked about all have a fame component to it and a publicity component to it. And a lot of those men we we taken out of I took out of kind of a study for it because their access to women in the in the marketplace is much different. Gotcha. Gotcha. So why is that your favorite part of the book? Because I, I, I mean, I have a heart uh, educating men. I've been mentoring for roughly 20 years. And what I've come across is that a lot of boys don't know their boys. A lot of F boys know their F boys, but really want to claim to be something else. So I just wanted to kind of identify that to the men, but then more specifically to the women. So you can take a look at what have I been dealing with? Right, right. I've been dealing with a lot of F boys who have been gaslighting me. They don't return my call. Why am I making myself available to them? Why am I passing up this, this guy that I work with? Oh, he's a guy. I may want a modern man. I may really want a traditional man. But if I want a modern man, a modern man wants certain things. A traditional man wants uh, other things. So I have to realize what I qualify for so I can give that man what I want to get the relationship outcome that I'm looking for. Gotcha. Okay. So what particular woman or... or um... Cause I don't want to put all women in one category. Like what category do you think this book there's is six, there's six, that's, there's six women, all six. Uh, <laughs> the, the, number, the numbers show it. Cause I get every number. I get all the demographic profile, every book. Gotcha, gotcha. Every type okay. of woman has, has read this, purchased this book, read this book and commented on this book. Gotcha. Okay, married and single. Uh, it's more single. single more single, okay. Divorce. Um, I don't know, I kind of, you know, this is this is more important for your audience and kind of your your space. You, I'm assuming we're roughly the same age. So I remember a time when in the church, we'll talk about the church. Okay. The married couples were over here, 
mentoring the single people. Right. Somewhere along the way, the single people broke off and had their own ministries. And right. then that fed into our community. And that is now what we have in the marketplace. Uh, I have the, the privilege of having two grandparents that were married over 50 years. My parents have been married over 40. So what I have observed in that scenario are the things that I talk about in this book and the things that used to be discussed and the things that used to be shared. I believe that as a marriage, in a marriage and as a marriage covenant, we have the responsibility to help coach and guide those that are single that are looking to be married. Because when you do surveys anywhere and you ask men, half of them want to be married. And when you ask women, 70% of them want to be married, but none of them are married. So none of them know what goes on. Married couples, we have to be willing to share something in order to let them know what they're going to be walking into. Right. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I love that. So at the end of the day, we've read the book. Um, what's the next step? Next step will be part two. Uh, so after we know what we qualify for, after we know uh, what we're willing to give, we kind of go through the steps uh, that we need to, that, that are outlaid, that we need to execute in order to be uh, made whole from a relationship standpoint. Um, as far as for me, uh, the next step is the second book. It'll be out you know, within a couple of months or so after we take a look at the response to this book. Um, and then there'll be a part three. Um, in the interim, I'm uh, continuing to be on you know, formats such as this. Uh, I've been blessed to be invited to a number of speaking engagements. And if those speaking engagements, people don't want to hear about sales. They don't want to know how I built the global team. They want to know, all right, we won't talk about this. Right. So, right. I'm, I'm just making that happen. Um, on my website, I do have, uh, through the encouragement of my wife, Lord, uh, to, I have a, a number of uh, coaching calls and slots available. Uh, I'll be taking on uh, some clients. I do long-term coaching, uh, and that's looked at as six months to a year uh, for professionals looking to get to have a change in their relationship or dating outcomes. Uh, so that's kind of what's next for me. Okay. Okay. So any last words that you have for my audience who are professional in the dating world or trying to get in the dating world? Trying to get into the dating world? Is right. It, what is that? How do you try? You just Because a lot of women are struggling with the dating world. You who know, are you like, trying to date? What are you trying to date? I don't know, because I'm not trying to date. I'm just asking them. I'm looking at the camera. Who are you trying to date? What do you mean? I live in I live in one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Yeah, that's there are true. people walking up and down the street all day. Go down the street, pick one you like to look at, and go talk to them. We'll make a deal. Let's make it happen. No, seriously. So for, for your audience, you're, you're out here. Uh, you're professional women. First, keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to sacrifice your profession to get the relationship outcome you want. You have to adjust what you're willing to give and who you're going to give it to. Love it. Okay. Okay. And not be taken advantage of. How do they? How do they protect themselves from I from people? Right. Y'all, at this point, at this stage, you're a professional woman. You got two, three degrees. You know, f boy when you see it. You can smell it. Right. Feel it. What's the one thing that I've heard? He's saying all the right stuff. If right. you have that in your gut, stop it. Stop it. the the word I want the word of the day to take out. Entertain it. Stop entertaining that stuff. Right. Right. Women control access to sex and children. Men are going to behave based on what you require for them to do. The f boys have run them up and have ever have the game messed up for the guys, the males, and the men. That's right. What, that's really what I believe is going on. That's true. I agree. <laughs> I agree. So tell us where we can find you. Tell us about your website. Uh, so the website is www.glensandifer.com. Uh, two ends in Glen. Um, there you'll be able to find uh, access to uh, coaching. Uh, also have uh, links to my social media pages. Uh, I have a number of uh, groups that we're building on Facebook. Um, also have access to our YouTube channel and TikTok. Um, on the website, you can also access uh, the book, The Middle Ground. Uh, it's available on Amazon for Kindle Unlimited, Kindle, download, and paperback. Uh, and shortly, it will be voiced. 
All right. Well, awesome. Glenn, thank you so much. This interview was amazing. I enjoyed it. So I know my community enjoyed it as well. Um, I will definitely link all of your, your um, links in our, in our podcast and I'll do an, another small clip episode as well so that we can get everything out to all the, to the community and on all the social platforms as well. So you guys know every Tuesday night, we're here at 10 o'clock PM. We're on YouTube and every platform that y'all listen to music or anywhere else. So we thank you guys for joining us again. We love you and we will see you next Tuesday. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Ebony. Oh, 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 oh,